Oh, we're, we're, we're like, hold it and then dance right at the beginning. Who's ready to go live? <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Thanks so much, guys. Oh, no. No, too much. <laughs> We've got two monitors going. All right. We are live. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Today's topic of this live, we're going to try to keep it focused on adding carbs and produce back to our platas. And we will kind of do more of a Q&A style format. But a reminder for anyone that's new to lives, you can do what's called super chat. So we're going to try to hit everyone's question in the chat. But if you want to make sure that we hit a question, you can do what's called a super chat. You want to explain what a super chat? Super chat will highlight your comment so everybody sees it. So it's basically just like putting your comment in front of everybody else's. And super chat does cost. There are different levels. Um, everything that you put into the super chat will be going back into our future farm. So it's like a farm fund. So thank you in advance if you super chat. This is the only reason why we're doing YouTube oh, yeah. for the also, farm. Also, if you super chat, you will join the angel board. So the angel board, this is everybody from last week who super chatted. Your names are still on here. And this is a decoration in our house. And like we said, at the end of one month time period, Whoever super chats the most gets a dance in their name to a song of choice. So that's the fun in super chatting. Um, I, I don't know how to turn this off. I'm I sorry. You. So when we super chat today, we will be throwing a little party each time. So if you want to party, you got to super chat. You didn't turn it off. There, you there go. we go. <laughs> All right. So we do have some questions that we got from Instagram on carbs. So we could start with those. Otherwise, we'll go through the stream on or the comment section and what your guys' questions are. We're just going to provide some backdrop, though. Before getting started, does anyone want to be a moderator for us to make sure that the message chain is, like, clean and yeah. we don't get the trolls with some scary comments? We had an ex a few excellent moderators last time. So if anyone so wants to be a moderator, moderate. we'll click you. Um, but Hello, do you want to preface? Around. Yeah, what am I preferencing? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you guys, if you've been following us for some time, you know that before carnivore, we were keto. Um, so we, we've been eating low carb and then transitioned to a zero carb diet for about a year. So now that we've added carbs and produce back into our life, a lot of people have been having questions, a lot of concerns, a lot of questioning. And so we just wanted to hop on here in real time to talk to you guys about it if you have any questions. Um, also, we are not experts on this by any means. So this is really just opening up the floor to conversation into our community to talk to you guys about this change. And we are not medical doctors, so do not take this as nutritional advice. We are just sharing our personal experiences. Yes, everything that we've kind of got wrapped up here, we, we will tell you where, where our sources are, all that fun stuff, who we get our information from, and kind of what we're interested in now. We're really having fun experimenting. So. Hopefully this will help anybody who wants to experiment for themselves too. Yeah. yeah. So let's get started. So yes. Oh, wait, shout out to the two people who have joined the Strong Sisters community on YouTube. We've got Mike, try 10 keto. Yes, that is an angel in the chat. He gets to use those cool things. So if everyone can go wait, wait, check out. another one. Oh, and Slow Carb, what's your name? Slow Carb Girl. Thank you for joining. You are an angel. So they angel. have the Strong Sisters community members have access to these really cool emojis. So if you guys check out the chat stream and look at Mike Try 10 Keto, That's look at those emojis next to his name. Do those do those look familiar? Oh, I have so many things I need to do. You gotta turn that off. Oh, I have so many things I need to do. I gotta turn that off. Super chat! Super chat! Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got a super chat from Nikki Bunny. Do you think it's best to introduce carbs little by little? Okay, so I think that the answer overall, especially for people who are most likely in the community of keto and carnivore who are there for health reasons, the answer would be yes. Um, just so you can really see what your body tolerates well, um, especially if you are coming from a place of healing. We 
ultimately did not do this. You guys know if you watched our video, we kind of started with a bunch of different carb sources. Granted, they were sources that we researched and that we like to call benign, so relatively lower toxic. Um, and we added in, we started with an amount about 70 grams of carbs per day. If you're somebody who, this is a personal choice we made. We were kind of excited about it and we didn't have any issues, but if you are a sensitive population, I would definitely recommend starting slow. And one route you could take is like, start with the more animal sources. So like if you can tolerate dairy, you could experiment with raw dairy because um, there's carbs in that. So or, raw, raw milk, introduce raw milk. raw milk or some raw yogurt you could make. Um, or you can try things like raw honey, which there's a lot of um, nutrients in that too. So don't do what we did no, don't do and maybe did. go source by source. So maybe Listen, start. That was Nikki. Nikki. So maybe start with, like she said, oh, raw milk. She, is this new? It might be her already. Then you can introduce raw honey and then you can introduce like fruits and then you can introduce like squash and then tubers. So go like oh, over the ones that we're eating. topic by topic. Yeah. No, that, okay. Let's go to the next question. Well, on that note, we'll just transition to what carbs we have been eating. Go for it. Okay. So in general, we are animal based plus fruits, tubers, raw milk and squash. And honey. and honey. So those are kind of like the five things that we're implementing. And honestly, we feel great and have not experienced any negative consequences from these sources. Okay. Yeah. She said, yes, that's me from last time. So Got added, it. okay. Really on the board. All right. So we don't have any super chats yet. So let's start with some of the questions. <clears throat> All right. Let's Where dive into challenging. the first question. Where did it go? Thoughts on microgreens. Thoughts on microgreens. So microgreens are ultimately, don't they have the seeds in them? Like, aren't they? Um, I would think like broccoli sprouts. Like broccoli sprouts? I think they're like really concentrated. So one beef, I got some beef with like cruciferous vegetables. They're part of the uh, brassica family. And so those can be high in sulforaphane and some people may be sensitive to sulforaphane. And I would argue that broccoli sprouts, since they're ultimately like the seed, they're gonna have more concentrated amounts of those. If you can handle those and they don't cause any negative consequences, again, I think that um, always experiment and find what works for you. So that's my personal thought on microgreens. I it's don't, really interesting because you'll get like Dr. Rhonda Patrick who loves her broccoli sprouts. And loves sulforaphane. And then you'll get people like Dr. Saladino who are like anti-broccoli sprouts yeah. and sulforaphane. So, uh, at that point, it's just like, it's almost like keto versus eating carbs. Like what research are you looking at? What applies most to your life and your preferences? The argument for microgreens and for sulforaphane, like from Rhonda Patrick, is that it's kind of like a hormetic effect. But I would argue that there are other ways that you could get these, you could you can get hormesis such as like sauna and cold water plunge and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, do you think going complete carnivore was necessary for healing your autoimmune issues? Or do you think you could have found the same healing and healed amenorrhea eating the way you are now? I That's a really, really good question. And all, what we're going to say now is literally just an assumption. I think that um, possibly our bodies could have healed, but we never would have... We never would have come here had we not gone through carnivore. So like we learned so much on our carnivore journey. We never would have understood the power of the nutrients in animal based products. And I think that really that's what the biggest message was and biggest takeaway from the carnivore diet was from us. Yeah. We never relied on animal products beforehand. We were no. very much plant based. And so I personally think that going through carnivore and that elimination and relying completely on animal-based products. We were getting so many bioavailable nutrients at the time that really allowed us to learn Sorry. and experience <laughs> um, what it felt like. Um, we, we also learned a lot about like um, whole food sources, like new, like the anti-nutrients in a lot of different produce, what didn't work for us. Uh, we were able to, it's like ultimately carnivore is an elimination diet. Yeah. So one note before we were carnivore, we were very, like I said, we were very much plant-based and we were like, heavy on the bok choy. So if anyone followed us at that time, if you remember bok choy. And I, I'm really happy that we went to carnivore because that removed a huge, like, so bok choy is part of the cruciferous vegetable family. And we think that our guts are a little bit sensitive to that. So going to carnivore eliminated that big food group. And so, yeah. And it also brought us to understanding the importance of sourcing Yes, um, to understand the importance of like nutrients you can derive from raw dairy 
or um, just like different things. So we've learned so much. So I don't know that we would have gotten here had we not gone to carnivore, yeah. but in terms of just like food and just eating meat, it's so hard to say. I, I think I saw significant improvements in my health just doing um, keto at the time. But then at, at the same time, I, I was measuring specific things. So I was measuring like the inflammation in my hands or um, my like joint pain but I wasn't measuring other things that are just as important, like my reproductive health or my hormones, um, or if I was actually feeling good throughout the day, or if my feeling good was relative to how I felt before. So the way we've been talking about it is we have pre-carnivore, very bad autoimmune symptoms, then we have carnivore, and then we have now. And it's interesting because our now is significantly better than both of these, but the middle was still better than this one. So yes. it's all relative if that makes sense. And so that's why we're really encouraging people to experiment for themselves because maybe they do feel better from where they were at their worst, but possibly they could start feeling even better yeah. if they take um, so a different approach. Okay, next question. Sorry. H. Bill, do you track your body temperature to measure metabolism? That is a great question. That is something we are diving into right now. We have to go find a thermometer that has a lot of significant digits. So it won't work well to just get a thermometer that gives you just two, like, so it just says like 70 or like 98 or 99. It will be more beneficial so that we have those two additional significant digits. So like 98.55 or something like that. So we're going to actually today to go oh. get a thermometer. It's on our to-do list. It's on our to-do list. So yes, we are going to start doing that. It also turns out that your body temperature will rise when you're about to start your cycle, right? I have no idea. We don't know. Really this. Someone told us that. So we should be able to see a trend if we're maybe starting to ovulate in our ovaries. Let's review our ovary names. Oh, Sade. Yep. And Susan Rajetti. Olga. Just so you know. And La Dasha. L-A dash A. Good. So yeah, we're super excited about getting into measuring our body temperature for metabolism. All right, next question. Have you noticed any tooth sensitivity from the fruit and honey? No. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Dr. Weston A. Price, he, dentist, and he did a lot of like research into the tooth decay of like other societies. Indigenous. Indigenous societies. And he noticed, yes, when they started introducing like the carbs and stuff, they started to have issues with their teeth. But it was more of the refined carbs. It what he never ended up blaming it just on the carbs because if you look, take a look at the diets before then, it was a lot of just whole foods like fruits and dairy were included. So I would say that the problem with the teeth is not sugar; it's more of the refined sugars, the processed carbs, the overdoing it there. Yeah, I have not noticed any issues. Granted, it hasn't been that long, but yeah. negative. Yep. All right, next question from Michelle. Do you plan to go back to carnivore after you get your period or continue to eat carbs? Guys, we're going to continue to eat carbs. Yeah. Um, I feel amazing. Obviously, I mean, like, okay, if somebody's going to be like, it's been two or three weeks. Yeah. Okay, fine. I honestly really do feel amazing. I feel like a complete weight has been lifted off my chest. And what's, like, one of the most amazing things is I notice how much better my body is tolerating everything now. Granted, we're making, like, really educated decisions on what carbs we're eating. But... Uh, it's that whole relative thing. Like I'm feeling so much better than both of these options. And so personally too, when I start a family, I don't think it's feasible for me to just be like, kids only eat meat. So, um, but I, I believe it's more sustainable for my future. I think the best thing that has come out of this like journey for us is that we are now much more willing to evolve and experiment. And so what's working right now at this moment, there's no guarantee that this approach will work a year from now, but our mindset now is so much more open to experimenting. So likely in a year from now, I will we will be evolving with our approach. I will likely not be eating six times a day. That's a little <laughs> hard logistically for planning things, but we will see, we will see. Yes. Okay. okay. I think, did someone? All right. We, get another, the, yeah, super chat. Super chat. This is so hard. <laughs> We're going to get this like synced for next week. Super chat. Super chat. Mike. Yeah. Super chat. What to say? What vegetables? No, okay. She didn't like that. What vegetables are low toxin, inflammatory, and low carb? Oh, yeah. Okay. So Mike's a, Mike is somebody who's on a very high fat diet. Can you add him to the list? He's on the list. Okay. So 
just as a brief you reminder, know, toxic I know part. we are not necessarily trying to remain in ketosis. That's not a main focus right now. So we aren't just including low carb options, but Mike has a great question. So if you were someone who is on the carnivore diet and you're interested in adding in low carb, low toxin vegetables, let's list them off. I would say cucumbers, cucumbers, <laughs> um, avocado, olives, and you can find some of the, they're like, uh, squash. There's some low carb squash options. Yeah. Like spaghetti, spaghetti squash, squash. Hardly a carb. Um, if this is a concern to you, you could just pay more attention to like not eating the skin and the seeds, which there's some evidence that has more toxins. Again, this is all information that's available online. And we've been getting a lot of questions like, Oh, I found one source that says this. And then one source that says another thing. That's like, that's the reality of a lot of studies. So I would Mike, I would say the avocado olives, uh, what was the other one? Cucumbers. Cucumbers. And you could also start to experiment with like some dairy that has like, he does. Mike makes yogurt. Okay, great. So yeah, making yogurt or kefir or things like that. Cause those can be relatively low carb. It's a great question, Mike. Cool beans. All right. Let's head back up to where we were. Uh, will you try high, high carb with animal products? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing right now. We're I'm definitely not, not entirely. Oh, will you try? I think he meant like all animal products. Oh, um, uh, we could run an experiment. We honestly, we're very open to experimentation yeah. right now with the main focus of healing our hypothalamic amenorrhea, but that would be a fun uh, experiment to just do meat, honey, milk. Boom. You could get a lot of carbs with that. Yeah, you, you could. could. on the honey, I guess. I we've really been enjoying everything we've been eating, um, but we have been heavy on the dairy products too. Yeah. So we could try that. And that would be somebody's route who say they wanted to stay carnivore and not be in keto ketosis and do a high carb diet instead, which is, yeah. there's like interesting, we are really excited with high carbs right now. Dr. Paul Saladino is kind of doing that approach. He's doing like a uh, meat based plus a little bit of honey, as he's been saying on his story. So that that's very much like a carnivore ish non some people get really upset when we say honey is carnivore so i would just okay <laughs> um just as a note we are going to talk about carnivore q a on our next live on monday today we're going to try to stay focused on adding carbs and produce back into our platter so yeah. any questions specifically about carnivore we are so we'll save those for our live on monday so make sure you guys tune back in okay we should go over the questions we got from instagram too yeah well they're here so okay. we're doing theirs first okay. y'all came um, should calorie and carb intake follow hormone levels during the cycle? So that is a great question. And I do not know enough about that. Also, I don't have a normal hormone cycle. And so that's something that like, I wouldn't be able to implement. And so I don't feel comfortable enough talking about it. I would point you to a great podcast with Dr. Jamie Seaman. So Dr. Fit and Fab, Fab and Dr. Paul Saladino on his fundamental health podcast, where they talk about adding carbs in with the female hormone cycle, but I don't know enough about that. Yeah. Fatfield mom does that. Yes, she does. Uh, Danny Vega's wife, Maura. Okay. Have you noticed any blood sugar issues adding in carbs? For example, I've found that I've been waking up at five to 6 a.m. So I'm trying to move my meal times a little later into the evening. Natalia. So, okay. Announcement. We, oh my Sarah God. and I have continuous glucose monitors from NutriSense. Yeah. And these have been great. Um, honestly, I have all my data. yeah, we are going to film a video next week, kind of sharing our results. Uh, needs a few days to calibrate, but this has been so key to assess like where my stress levels are and which foods are better or worse. Um, I haven't noticed any blood sugar issues, like for example, any crashes. No, like it's so interesting. Um, we I've had the most stable energy I've had since I can. I was like younger. Um, and yesterday was our highest carb day. We were over 300 grams of we carbs. We experimented. And I felt the best that I've ever, that I've felt in a really long time. Yeah. So I have not had any issues with that. Granted, we are eating um, technically five times a day. Yeah. So we could just be like continuously feeding, but no issues with that. Yeah, I think. Okay. Okay. So Jacqueline, does white oak pastures also grow fresh vegetables. Yes, they do. They have an organic vegetable farm. Our girl, Sarah, if you are tuning in, probably not. not. Our girl, <laughs> Sarah grows all their vegetables and we are going to be sourcing from them soon. So yes, you can buy organic vegetables from white oak pastures as well. We got a super chat. Isaac, he's getting a 
a lot of this. You did $50, Isaac, you were at the top of the list. No, he did 10 euros. Oh, okay, sorry, we're at 10. Okay, we'll get to KJ in a second. Okay, we're Isaac. to do it twice. I'm gonna change up the music. All right, Isaac, super check, it's moved to the top. So carnivore was kind of working for me, i.e. my colitis went away, but felt very tired. You two have actually spurred me into incorporating oh, some healthy carbs statement. back into my diet. Feel amazing. Thanks. But see, that's awesome. I Okay, mini rant. I think what happened with us, like literally you guys, um, I will admit last fall, I went to a pumpkin patch and I got some squashes. I brought them home and then I was afraid to eat them. Like I wouldn't eat them. I actually ended up throwing them away and that was such a waste. Um, I think what happens in communities that are like so set on one thing and like we talked about this in our diet culture video where you fill your feed with the same reinforcement, you might lose sight of your reality, which might look different from somebody else's. Like say somebody really does have a problem with oxalates, but you start to assume that you do. That's just an example. And so people like that, Isaac, I'm, I'm really happy for you that you're willing to experiment. I just, a few months ago, I was not willing to experiment and I was stuck in this really pretty bad place. Um, I don't think I was upfront about it with you guys. Just a reminder to everyone, like what's so powerful about this way of eating is that you can experiment and then know that you can always <laughs> return to this base, right? So like, let's say Sarah and I's health just in a few months, it's not going to, but like you have this animal base and I think that that's the most important thing. And so yeah. we're encouraging, yeah. if you're not feeling at your best, you're not living your best life, you're not being fair to yourself, don't be afraid to experiment and don't feel guilty no. for breaking the rules of a diet yeah. because ultimately like there's no one diet fits all. And so you have to find the diet that works for you. And Isaac, I am so happy that you have found Isaac's eating style. That's great. Absolutely. After all this, I would like to just remove the word diet from my, I don't like that word. We don't like it because I want to just find a way of eating that works for my lifestyle. Yes. And I've been in a diet culture for so long now that I'm on the outside of it. I see how toxic, toxic it is. So what we're forming here is more of just like whole based foods, that make us feel good. Join us, guys. Not no like more diets. Diet. No more diets. All right. right. You have to party for KJ. We We're got a KJ a party. One. Okay, KJ gets a different one. Oh, it's the same one. Sorry, hold on, KJ. Oh, that was the other one. <laughs> so you guys better be dancing with us. Okay. All right, KJ just sent a message. You girls are a couple of beautiful Irish lasses. Yes, we are Irish. You're going to be great mothers. Oh, love, love from, from a, a vegan. vegan. Oh, I love that. See, we're all KJ. Thank you. We're inclusive here. Thank you so much. Being a mother is like why I'm on this journey to begin with. So I really appreciate that. Okay. Next question. We need to find where we were. I'm sorry if we missed. Oh my gosh, we got another super chat. Yeah, the top. Matthew. Ready? <laughs> okay. Okay. That really hurt. That was a bad idea. All right, Matthew, did you watch uh, YouTube videos or read books by Mark Sisson and Dr. Eric Berg when eating keto? Who do you recommend to follow in the keto community? Oh, okay. Um, who did you learn about keto from? She brought me into keto, so she did most of the research. I was extremely hesitant. Um, I started with Dr. Dom D'Agostino. Um, he is a scientist and researcher at University of South Florida. And his, I just became like obsessed with his research. So he does a lot of research with like NASA and other like Department of Defense groups to demonstrate the benefits of ketosis for the warfighter. And I just thought that that was really cool. And that just kind of got me into keto. Um, I think that Mark Sisson is a great source for keto diet. Who are other great sources for keto? Honestly, I didn't look into them. I sure think you were the keto star. Um, now there's, uh, there's perfect keto is one looks like a website. Oh yeah. Dr. Anthony Gustin has a lot of great resources yeah. on his perfect keto website. Would definitely suggest checking him out. So for our like thoughts on keto right now, and this is just coming from our experience is that keto is great for a few reasons. Somebody who needs to lose um, a lot of weight. Just as a preface, this is going to, this may be an unpopular opinion. We were talking about this. Too. Oh yeah. Well, we're bringing back the an unpopular, unpopular opinion. Opinions. Uh, somebody who needs to lose a lot of weight and that's the route they want to take. Um, or healing. Or healing. Somebody who has diabetes, I guess, or problem with needs, carbs. Yeah. Um, and then, like, the undeniable research of pe uh, people eating keto, like, with um, what epilepsy. Epilepsy. So, like, specific issues. Um, for us, I think that we 
it was beneficial to experiment with, but I think we stayed, I think we stayed just on that path for a little too long. It definitely helped us reverse our autoimmune and reduced inflammation. But I think that if someone is otherwise healthy, being metabolically flexible and uh, going in and out of ketosis is something well, that is totally There's also a lot of information out there. Again, this will probably get some people angry, but that operating in ketosis is like the less than optimal state for your body, um, quote unquote, like starvation mode, and that your body's preferred fuel in some people's mind is glucose. Um, I'm finding that I am feeling a lot better in glucose. I think when I, in the past, when I was eating carbs, I was eating a lot of um, refined carbs. I was eating a lot of toxic vegetables. I was not eating a whole foods based diet, even though I thought I was eating healthy. Um, and again, I wasn't prioritizing micronutrients from animal products. So a lot of the brain fog and fatigue and rashes that I was experimenting, I falsely attributed it to eating carbs. And now on the flip side of that, I can see that I was eating just the wrong things. I was eating them in amounts way too much and not getting any of the good things. And so that's just my new mindset on it. I think that it has its benefits for several populations, but for people like Ash and I, it wasn't beneficial all the time. In summary, sorry, context is key. It is. I think we have a super chat to dance to. All right, we got another super chat. No dance. Ren. <laughs> Okay, I want you guys to dance with us, okay? Okay, Ren. Okay, so you did a super chat, so we are going to answer this question, but we would like to keep the carnivore questions to our carnivore Q&A on Monday, but we will, we will answer that. Okay, Ren. When we were on carnivore, did we take potassium and magnesium supplements? When we started carnivore, we uh, continued with electrolytes, but we got to a point where we would go a few days and we wouldn't take them and we wouldn't feel any different. And we got to the point of just having salt every day and it turns out that if you consume like higher levels of salt, your body's going to be more willing to hold on to those other electrolytes. So you actually don't need to supplement them once you're like adapted to carnivore. So I would suggest, so we, we didn't, um, meat ultimately has a good amount of magnesium, but I would just experiment go a few days without it, a few days with it. And I think what's always, what I uh, recommend is, uh, adding a good amount of salt in, especially if you are an active individual. And go from there. I hope that that helps. If not, ask it again and we, we can clarify. <laughs> but we got another super chat. Uh, Jonah. All right, hold on, Jonah. This is not that bumbling my heart. Sorry, I'm taking all this. Okay. Okay, this is a good one. This is a great question. So she said, thoughts on FODMAPs. Do you eat them or just honey? So right now we're just eating honey. We did have some avocado, which is high in FODMAPs. Apparently, if you eat like under 30 grams, it's not suddenly. Um, I We had SIBO in the past, which is a condition that you would need to pay attention to FODMAPs. That was before um, carnivore. Um, and I'd be definitely paid attention to it then. Right now, it just is not popping up, really. Like in the carbs we're eating, it's just not really there besides the honey. And I guess some sources of dairy. So we are really not focusing on that. I think that that's important for if you are, like if you can nail down the fact that you have some specific gut issue going yeah. on and you are um, intolerant to them, but we are personally not anymore. Like I really feel like my gut significantly improved. Um, but we're not doing like the work. garlic. No, we're not in that kind it's of stuff. It's just like preference. Yeah, yeah. So it's not our main focus right now, but I think that if you are concerned and you came from a past of like having like bad gut, I would say avoid it for your reintroduction of other more, but there's more benign carb sources than fat. You can get more benign. You can get more benign. I like think those. that um, people, like we did spend a, like almost a full year in absence of all that. Yeah. So I think that we did give our guts a lot of time to heal. And again, we'll, we've talked about now, we feel like other things went wrong, like our metabolism and our hormones, but if we're just looking at our guts, I guess potentially that was the best option. Yeah. Okay, let's go try to find where we were. Do you want to take a question while I'm searching? Yeah. Okay. How about the, uh, oh, wait, where? Okay, um, we got a question. Are we taking any supplements now? Um, we are, we just started like two days ago just taking a digestive enzyme um, just because we we haven't had carbs in, in quite some time, so we kind of wanted to just be careful with that. Um, we got ours from, I think it's called Mito Life. Mito, it's Matt Blackburn's. Matt Blackburn's brand. We just support him. We I like his work. I think he's like blunt and it's pretty awesome. And so that's the one we went with. Uh, just taking that before our larger meals. Yeah. 
Okay. Have you tested fasting insulin prior to adding carbs or are there any other markers you feel are useful to monitor? So did that last summer? That is a great question, especially if your focus is like um, ultimate health optimization. But one thing to keep in mind for our journey is we are trying to reduce our stress as much as possible. And sometimes like adding in too many data markers can be stressful for an individual. So if you are one of those individuals where just adding too much information is going to add more stress, would we'll just recommend kind of going by feel. Your body is incredibly intelligent and will give you signs. Um, I would say that your my fasting insulin was really good in all my blood work from last year with carnivore, which makes sense because we weren't consuming carbs. I don't know what it is right now after adding in carbs, but I will measure it once we get follow up blood work. I would say that that is, is a good measure. I would also say that one of the best measures is going to be getting like a continuous glucose monitor and seeing how your body like responds to carb meals. And so if you get a huge spike, if that spike stays elevated for a while, those are also signs that, hey, maybe your body isn't handling those carbs as well as you'd like them to. Or that you're under a lot of stress. Correct. You take other, other lifestyle changes to fix that. Yeah. Okay, so oh, I can get another one. I got it. Okay. Um, so what about using berries as a post-workout after weightlifting, or should I wait until after my five-mile hike to have 10 carbs of berries? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, but just to remind everyone, we are really taking a switch in our focus. Uh, performance is not a focus right now. We really have to take a step back and kind of limit the amount of weight training that we do. And so us you adding guys in watched our video, our healing and manaria journey, the toothpicks. we've got to reduce the amount of our strength <laughs> training. But if I was someone that was trying to optimize my performance, I would say that there are benefits with adding just the main, the main um, point is that you should just keep your carbs around your lift. If you're trying to remain like low carb, you just want it for performance. Um, yeah. So we tried doing, carbs before our lifts. And we found that that led to a little bit more water retention, which interfered negatively with our lifts. Okay. But at the same time, during that period, so this was last summer during our targeted carnivore diet approach. So we were adding carbs in around our workouts, maybe one time a week, which would hurt a little bit more. We were like really looking for things. We were like, Oh, I didn't respond well to that. I think that was the part of like the fear in our minds. Like oh, I know that I didn't do well or I thought I didn't do well on carbs before, so I'm adding them in. So I must be like super bloated or brain foggy. So it was like, it's we were looking for it. Yeah. Um, so, but my suggestion to you, Jojo, would be to experiment what where you feel best. So whether that's pre-workout, intra-workout or post-workout, but we don't go into your workouts saying, I need to deserve these carbs. Yeah. Instead, use the carbs as like, how can I fuel myself? How can I feel at my best so that I can go and enjoy this uh, yeah. energy expenditure, this workout? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I used to, like, even before starting this little, like, weight gain journey for Amenorrhea, I used to feel like in the mornings I had to earn my food. Really weirdly, I got into this, like, horrible mindset. And it, was, it wasn't even, I didn't think it every single day, but in reflecting back, I feel as though, I had this weird fasting relationship where like I needed to fast get my workout in and then I could feast. Like I, I had to do that during my fast and then I could feast to reward myself. And like, no, I should have been nourishing myself like before then. Yeah. Um, how do you feel the day yeah. after so many carbs? I feel it feeling good. Like, like I, I should. should make a copyright. Don't sing too much. I, I feel really good. Um, I stable energy yesterday and then woke up today, stable energy. I was talking to Ashley last night on our walk that we've both been really um, calm and we haven't snapped on each other. Like sometimes we would have get, gotten into like little bickers or like one of us would have been snappy. And I think that's definitely having to relate to what we're eating and how we're eating and our hormones. That's been gone. And then, so you're asking for the day after, I feel the same as yesterday. I feel good. And we yeah. had um, two meals today. Yeah. So Amanda said, I get needing some carbs as a woman, but why reach immediately for plants? Why not go for dairy and honey first? So it's honestly just preference. Well, um, we, we um, I would say when she first started with carbs, she was doing a lot more honey. But now we are doing the honey, the squash. dairy, and the squash and the berries. Um, preference. And if you do look at like how um, a lot of our ancestors did eat, the woman actually ate 
tubers, um, both men and women, eight berries as well. They actually favored, I'm looking at like one specific population here. Was it the Hazdas? Hazdas. The, Hazdas. the men and women both preferred honey as their top favorite food. Um, so they, there's indication that we've kind of always eaten these things. I think that meat was the preference for a lot of ancestral populations, but in times that they couldn't get meat, um, the woman would forage and find the berries and the tubers, and that was their, their quote, if you want to call it survival food. But in that case, I don't see anything wrong with it. And so preferentially, preferentri preferentially yeah. we really enjoy it. It gives more variety That's to why. our platters. They're but more if, bumping. If you're not like, hey, I want to do the dairy and the honey, those are like excellent, so excellent, excellent sources. Okay. I think the, the thing about this all is like just escaping from that uh, like dogmatic mindset. And that's been really, really nice for us. And I'm really glad you guys are here for it. Okay, so Sophia, do you think you will experiment with nuts and seeds? Mm, I don't no. think so. It's just no, it's not on our list of things to do. It didn't serve us. I mean, I don't know. Okay, maybe it wasn't that big of a deal in the past, but I think there's just more research indicating that you don't need them yeah. than that you should eat them. So no. It's also just a per personal preference as well. I, I'd say the answer for most, like, it just is no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, okay, but, okay. If you're somebody who's like, oh, my God, I love, like, my almond butter, then, like, and you don't feel anything wrong with it, then, like, eat your almond butter. I would just always prioritize the extremely nutrient-dense foods that have the least amount of things working against you before that, and then add that in. Um, yeah. Because you, you don't want any nutrient blockers to a certain point. Um, where is it? Where is it? These awkward moments in between. Uh, it, there's comments. How are you guys this. doing today? Yeah. Let us know. How I are you doing? You could, like talk back. Okay. Are you getting constipated and gassy since you've been eating the carbs again? I've actually, okay. So we're having a little bit of a slightly different experience here. I have had consistent poops every morning. I have not had this in a very long time. So I am extremely happy with my digestion. Um, and this was before we added in the digestive enzyme, but the consistent poops have remained. So I'm really happy with it. So my digestion has not been the best, just being 100% honest with everyone. When we first started, we were using, we kind of we got a little bit obsessed with this local sheep yogurt that we found. And so we were just consuming a lot of it. And it turns out that that yogurt was pasteurized milk. And so there's a difference between pasteurized dairy and raw dairy. Um, a lot of some people who are lactose intolerant can handle raw dairy just fine, but they react negatively to pasteurized dairy. And since removing that pasteurized dairy, my di my digestion has gotten significantly better. It's not perfect yet, but we're experimenting. I think that it's not realistic to assume that my digestion is going to be perfect after making such like a drastic shift. Um, but hey, there's some fun experiments ahead of us. So, for example, like low fiber fruits honey and meat and just stick with those for a little bit. Or even we could try uncooked meat. But I do have a statement about this. So Ashley has dealt with chronic stress for like over 10 years. And so she's also dealt with constipation throughout this entire time period. So although her digestion did improve with carnivore, it did not like resolve. So I think that's an important distinguishment to make. Um, there's so, also significantly less waste on carnivores. So, so there's other issues going wrong there. And I think that if you look into the research, um, a lot of the issues could be stemming from her thyroid. And so now that we're kind of tackling that, we're going to hope that the constipation gets better with tackling that. But we're experimenting. Absolutely. All right. Turn Another, it on. Turn oh it on. Well, let me get, I want to make a good one. You guys, please dance with us or else we look ready. Really and... This is called Mocha Disco Party. All right. All right, Melissa. That's, that's hard. All right, thank you, Melissa. So Melissa has a question. I'm from a strict vegan background. What tips do you have for getting over my cognitive cognitive dissonance with meat and the benefits of an animal-based oh, diet? Hi. This is something that we love talking Melissa. about. Let's so, try to restrict ourselves. Okay, okay. Well, okay, there's a lot of things. So just our personal experience there. We're coming from, we, before going um, full carnivore, we were coming from a more plant-based diet too, and we thought that we were doing the right thing. So we really, we, we selectively looked at what research we were looking at. We were like, oh, um, all animal production's bad. Like, might as well just uh, save that animal and not eat it. Um, that's just really flawed. 
it's interesting in the um, anti-meat, anti-eating animal sphere, um, like those vegan propaganda, propaganda films, they fail to mention anything about regenerative agriculture or humanely raising animals um, and all that can do for the environment. And so we never saw that until we came to carnivore. So it was a really interesting switch we made like right away. So I'm gonna give a brief recap. So the soil in our country is dead. There's not much nutrients in it and that's due to industrialization. This is, this is meant to help you with your, with your mental. Yes, due to industrialization and due to a lot of monoculture agriculture. So in Illinois here, for example, we see like just fields of corn fields, corn, corn fields. Corn, corn, corn. And so a piece of land is dedicated to one crop and it's barren for most of the year. So a lot of vegan diets, you re it requires for you to rely on monoculture agriculture because you're getting all of your nutrients I from soy, in the big one. soy corn, corn, monoculture agriculture. And on the flip side, if you look, I would suggest looking into like Allen Savory and regenerative agriculture. Properly managed holistic management farms can actually add soil, add health back into the soil and help us improve the climate situation that we're facing. So I would suggest looking into regenerative agriculture instead of focusing on like feedlot cows and feedlot meat production. Absolutely. Oh wait, and she asked another question. What are the benefits of an animal-based diet? So the we still believe this, that the micronutrients that you are going to receive from animal-based products are the most bioavailable nutrients relative to plant sources. What are you doing here? I'm giving, I'm gonna give you a video to watch. She's gonna, are you gonna send it in the chat? Yeah. All right, so Melissa, make sure you check in the chat. We're sending a video for you to watch um, to improve the cognitive dissonance with meat and benefits. Thank you for the super chat. All right, I think we got another super chat. That's awkward, we did not, oh, Frida! Awkward. Hey girl, hey super girl, chat. Frida. Okay, right, Frida, I wanna see your moves. Frida, dance with us, okay? Do some hair whipping. How do you turn it on? This is awkward. Here, go. Wait, plug it in. Plug it in. Yeah. Woo! Super chat! Super chat! Yeah! Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. We are in our 20s. Okay. Okay. Frida, great question. How has your sleep changed since you implemented these changes? So, do you want to talk first? Um, yeah, how do you turn this off? I got it. Okay. Okay. Um, I wake up a lot less in the middle of the night to go pee. That yes. is probably twofold. I think I was overdoing it on the protein. Can you please turn this off? Yeah. Um, and so I was waking up a lot to go pee. I was also really, really salting my food when I was just at carnivore. It was like almost an addiction. I can't turn this off. Was, so I was, eat <laughs> I was eating a lot of salt too. So then I would consume a lot of water at night. And so I was waking up in the night to go pee a lot. I also didn't really remember my dreams. Um, I wasn't, I don't think I was getting that into to deep sleep. And so the last few nights I still wake up around like two to go to the bathroom, but um, I'm waking up like out of a dream, really deep sleep, feeling excellent. And then in the morning I wake up feeling zen and calm. I So for the past like few months, she's been getting up significantly earlier than me. Um, and I would get up at like seven, 7.30 and that's really late for me. And so I was kind of in this rut of not feeling refreshed when I'd wake up. So I would correlate that to just overall fatigue and overdoing it. And so now I'm waking up energized, ready to go a lot earlier. So my sleep has, has improved, I would say the last few weeks. So my sleep has also improved. Um, it's interesting. I, I still have room for improvement, right? So they, we're always evolving to try to find our optimal health. So there are things that I, my sleep can improve on as well. But a few things that I've noticed, I fall asleep so much faster. So my sleep onset is like, bam, within five minutes. Um, the second thing I've noticed is that I have significantly less wake ups like she was doing. I now wake up maybe one time, maybe two times in the middle of the night. Whereas before, honestly, I was waking up about six times in the middle of the night to go pee. So I think that there's something to say about maybe the carbs and then also the reduction in the amount of protein that we're consuming for our last meal. So I think a few changes, reducing the amount of protein, we were eating like hundred grams of protein in our last meal because we were hoarding things and doing more <laughs> like fasting. So reducing the amount of protein in our last meal and then also the inclusion of carbs have improved our sleep. One thing that I'm not satisfied with yet is I'm still waking up at like 5 a.m. And that's great because it, I can get up and like start writing and work on my like dissertation and papers and stuff. But I would like to get an additional hour of sleep. So due to your suggestion, Frida, I'm going to be starting supplementing some ashwagandha and experiment with that for reducing my cortisol levels as well. But Thanks for the super chat, girl. We got another super I know, chat. This is getting really tiring. Please. All right. Us. Wemily. All right. 
things I'm going to look back in like 10 years and be like, oh. Approximately how many calories Good were you question. eating a day before going all in? All right, we got to give some context. Yeah. All right, so last year, carnivore diet, we were both like bulking, and that was up through like January of this year. I was consuming around 2,400 calories, so my fats were very high, very high, upwards of sometimes 220, 230 grams a day. You were more like- I was like 100 less. Yeah, so like 22, 23, around, same, around the same. So we were steadily gaining weight on that. Then we had an event that was scheduled in April where we needed to be lean, but that event obviously got canceled because of the current uh, coronavirus situation. So we started a cut in February um, to get leaner for that. And so we ended up reducing our calories at a certain point by like 800, calories I a was, day so i was at the point of eating 1400 1400 and gaining weight uh, yeah it was, we were gaining weight extremely this is where the red flag for our thyroid and our metabolism was like ladies like fix something so the us trying that cut was one of the best things that has happened to us because it made us take a step back and be like whoa whoa, whoa. like we're really active in the gym we've been active for so long yeah why are we still struggling to lose weight like that doesn't make sense and so that's what honestly triggered Sarah to be like, yo, we finally got to fix this or else we are going to have to eat like 900 calories a day to be able to lose weight. And that's just not sustainable. No. So yeah. And now we're eating 2,700 calories. These girls like to eat. And honestly, I am enjoying it. But, uh, oh, absolutely. We didn't go from, uh, 1400, 1600 calories to the carbs. We increased our calories on carnivore just for a little bit. So we were maybe more around like 2000. And then now we're at like, what did you say? Yeah, like 2,800 a day. Because we need to be in a surplus to tell and our ovaries we're here for you. I ladies. think this is something interesting. Like your body really can enter starvation mode and you might be fearful to add food back in because you've had a negative experience with it. But a lot of people do go through reverse diets and they do it slowly and they find that their body actually starts forgiving them and responding really well to the increases in calories. So don't fear eating more food. Um, then again, I would say that like hormonally, your body should be in a good place though. So. Yep. All right. We got Oops. a, we have a super chat from Alyssa and it's just a thank you girl. So Please Melissa, dance with you us. get it. Melissa. Ah! Oh, so <laughs> hey Melissa. This is for you. I'm sorry for her anybody. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, Melissa. All right, then we got another super chat. Oh my god, Tiki, Tiki Tembo. I'm so sorry. For this. <laughs> Turn this on. It would be this would be more entertaining if I actually had boots, but we're not feeling boots yet. Okay. All right, you're Tiki. My boots. <laughs> All right. Oh. Turn the light off. You turn it on. Any difference, gas, bloating, etc., in digestion from including fermented vegetables? We haven't done enough experimentation with fermented well, vegetables. Um, we're doing our um, pickled carrots and our pickled pick pickles. Pick. So we're doing right now, pickled, pickled cucumbers, so pickles, yeah. and pickled carrots right now. That's about it. Um, I would say like maybe sauerkraut, but I have no real urge for it. I know there's a lot of beneficial, or people say there's a lot of like prebiotics you can get from those things. Um, I would say we're trying to get any like good bacteria from the dairy they were eating. Yeah. And so that's kind of our mindset on it. So we haven't really experimented enough to say any differences in digestion with that. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we All got right. another super chat and it's just a statement. Zero. So <laughs> what are you guys doing today? Huh? How you doing? What are you, you doing on this Saturday? Today? What? That's a nice Sunday. Okay, Romero. thank you, Ramiro. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Another one. Oh my gosh. We've got another super chat. We got a question here. Are Bianca. Easy to restart. Bianca, this is for you. It's going. It's going. We'll just do it. Oh, this is not the right song. Oh, guys, this is really hard. I'm a bad DJ. Oh, it's not there. <laughs> We 
<laughs> okay. Bianca, what about chocolate? Okay, so we, I personally just don't feel the need to add chocolate. So some people would argue that chocolate is high in oxalates, which it is. Relative to other foods, chocolate is a high oxalate source. So I would not recommend consuming chocolate every single day for every single meal. However, if you include it every once in a while, there's not a problem with that. If you are going to include chocolate, I would recommend um, monitoring your calcium intake. There is a study showing that for people who have an adequate, adequate dietary I calcium think. intake, their body is better at removing oxalates from their system. So your body is going to absorb fewer amount of oxalates if you have a good amount of calcium. So this let's, is let's, in the case that you have a problem with them, though. That's, if, you don't, if you tolerate it, fine. Then I, I'm This new mindset is like, if you tolerate it, fine, then eat it if you like it. A lot of people probably don't have an issue with oxalates. We are not saying, yes, go consume a high oxalate diet. But I think one thing to keep in mind is, um, who's the leader in like the oxalate? What's her name? Sally? Sally Norton. One thing to keep in mind is she doesn't say a zero oxalate diet. She recommends a low oxalate diet. So if you have problem. if you have so like just keep your oxalate consumption to a minimum and include your calcium sources. Let's review some quick calcium sources. I like my dairy. Dairy. dairy I'm all for the dairy. Dairy is going to be a great calcium source, especially raw cheese because it's more concentrated. So you can get like a serving of calcium in like a serving or two of raw cheese. Oh, you can get the same amount of calcium in like seven ounces of milk as one ounce of raw cheese. So it's pretty cool. Other sources, if you don't want to dairy, include bones, sardines, bones. munch on some bones after you make some bone broth or chicken feet. You can also take a bone meal supplement. So Eggshells. if you're going to include some chocolate, Bianca, maybe consider your calcium intake. If you're concerned. Yeah. Okay. I don't where know where we, we were. We're, we're. If you guys want to make sure that I'm, we're going to try to hit every question. We also hold these. So if you if we miss your question, make sure you do a super chat to bring it to the top. But we are going to see. I'm gonna just find the next question because we're a little bit lost. There's this chat stream. Um, oh, somebody asked if we're worried about our autoimmune conditions coming back. That's a great question. Any carbs, and I think we were kind of referencing this earlier. We were doing a lot of things wrong before our autoimmune conditions. That likely was the cause of the problem it wasn't the carbs itself so personally um i feel like i'm eating a very nutrient dense diet still and i'm minimizing the amount of toxins which i think is important for somebody who has some sort of autoimmunity going on so i am not concerned with the approach that we're taking yeah bridget has the doctor given you an expectation for when your period might come back so uh, this is a really hard question and it's going to differ for everyone one thing to keep in mind is like I've been, I've been bad. I've had amenorrhea for over 10 years, so it's going to probably take a little bit. And that's why I'm doing a lot of these, like, I have to take every measure that I can. I have to set myself up for success because it's been 10 years of amenorrhea. So you were saying something about like, you have the phase. Oh, the, the follicular phase. cycle apparently has to be healthy. You have to be healthy for all a hundred days for you to see your cycle come back. That's what I read in, um, the period repair manual and no period now what those are two books and so it's probably going to take anywhere from like a month to six months to a year to a year honestly but i'm game for it we're Anything all in now for susan Rajetti, and shade i think it's just i need to always remember that like right now we are functioning below what we what we could we are functioning yeah. suboptimally because we do not have normal hormones and so why not go through this cycle so that we can experience what life is like to have normal functioning hormones? I'm so excited. Along the same journey though, so getting our period back, we're also trying to now what we would, if you wanna call it like fix your metabolism or just speed up our metabolism, get to a better place with handling food. And so that is another plus for adding the carbs in. I think that there's interesting data online showing that it can and will help. All right, we got another super chat. Oh, Donna! All right, ready? Good. Plug it in. It's plugged in. Let's go, guys. Right. I need to dance with my egg. I'm cooking. I'm that egg. <laughs> yeah, eat it. Okay. Oh, too many things. Okay, Jonna asked Jonna. how to get calcium without dairy or histamines? Okay, so that is a great question. And I think that your best bet, you could experiment with eggshells. 
Uh, so eggshells, you can get a ton of calcium in like half an eggshell. I think you can get almost your daily intake. So that's one thing. Crush up your eggshells and just like find a way to get that down. You could also do a bone meal supplement, but be very, very careful with where the uh, company is sourcing their bones from because it can have high metal, high toxin levels. So just be super careful about that. Um, and then another option would be Gerald Steiner mineral water actually has a high amount of calcium. So those would be my three suggestions. Great question. Okay. This next one. Okay. We got to dance for it. We got it. We got to dance. We got another one. Throw out the fishing line. Come to us. Okay. So much going on. Okay. So. Sarah, I'm just brainstorming. What should we name our first child? I'm thinking Vladimir. Thanks for all you doing the inspiration, and I'm open to your naming feedback. So, guys, Sarah has a lot of uh, like people asking to be her boyfriend. Oh my god, that's not true. Yeah. Um. So, Vladimir, I'm like I'm open to it, but I think that uh, Vladimir. Oh yeah, I kind of like it. It could be like a male name, but just you guys will be the first to know if I have a girl. Her first, my first girl will be named Kira. That's just what I planned. Wait, I didn't even know that. K-I-R-A. Well, here you go. Announce. What about a boy? Ugh, it's harder. Vladimir, apparently. Okay. That's Kira my and Vladimir. boyfriend said. One Thank thing you. that we do know for sure is that they are going to be helping hands at the farm. I need to have kids because I need free work. Yeah. So, like, that's one of the, the urges. Okay. So, just... Letting everyone know we've got about five minutes left. And so we are going to try to cover everyone's questions. If you want to move it to the top, remember there's super chat, but we are going to just go to the next question in the chat. What do you guys think about drinking coffee? By the way, you guys are the cutest. Thank you, Maria. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I know from the past that I am a slow digester of coffee. And so it negatively impacts my sleep. That's just my personal experience with it. I guess my body has like a really long half-life with digesting coffee. Um, so I don't personally feel the need to consume it. There are coffee options out there that are apparently like certified low mold and stuff. Yeah. So if you're worried about that with your coffee, I would just look for those sources. Organic. Um, and yeah, we just don't drink it right now, but we have talked about it. I was like, hey, Ash, would you ever have coffee again? And she was like, yeah. I, I would be experiment to try. I would, I would be experiment. I would I be think, willing to try and yeah. to experiment. But don't do like instant coffee. Um, there's definitely like higher mold amounts and toxins in those. We aren't coffee people anymore as much. So, no. okay. Um, damn you coffee <laughs> during the period talk dudes. All right. Anymore. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. When will you, Shannon, when will you be hiring for the farm? Guys, that's a great question. We are going to need as much help as we can. We cannot wait to announce like all of our plans coming up. Speaking of which, you guys should, should you guys should be subscribed to our newsletter because we're announcing some fun plans. That's on our website, armstrongsisters.com. That comes out tomorrow morning. But hopefully we'll be hiring next year if anyone wants to come work yeah, on the Strong Sisters Farm. If you're farm. having a mid or late life crisis and you want a new job, Come work at our farm. Like, the, clearly we are too. So <laughs> just come join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you can live on the land. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a great question. Brian, do you have a date for the carnivore diet recipe book with Dr. Paul Saladino? So we've gone through a long evolution with this cookbook. Um, oh. We've had a lot of the recipes ready. And then now we're working with a publisher. And so that kind of changes things. And so there's a lot of like logistical things that have to happen. So we have to do like a contract and things like that. And it, it will be, everything will be submitted in this year. I'm so sorry for how long it's taken. It's just the end goal of what we wanted it to be has evolved throughout this past year. It's evolving with us. If that gives you some insight on what it's going to look like. Last summer, we made over 150 recipes in now we just are adding more. So it's just, there's a, there's a lot to come. Stay tuned. I promise we will update you guys with more information, but we are working with a really awesome publisher. And so that just means that the cookbook is going to be able to be better for all of you guys, which is a really cool opportunity. And we are really thankful uh, to Dr. Paul Salamino for letting yeah, us be involved gonna, in this it's process. It's definitely involved with us like carnivore and carnivore-ish. So for if sure. you're interested in that, it's exciting stuff. 
think that's all. Okay, so guys, we are hitting the one hour mark. Just a few reminders, we'll be back on here live on Monday to talk about the more carnivore diet Q&A. Although we're not full carnivore anymore, a lot of people still have remaining questions. Okay, Wemily hit us with one last. She did a super chat. We got to, we got to play it. Wemily, we're talking to you. This is more of like a cool one. Wemily. Wemily, I'll add your name to the list that fell again. Hey. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Emily. Emily, this is a great question to end this live with because this was ultimately what the topic was about. We are going to list what we think to be the best low. Uh, we're going to start with the benign and then we'll go with the low carb options. So the most benign carb sources, in my opinion, are going to be honey, raw dairy. So raw milk, fruit, squash. What am I missing? So, okay, it's like we keep saying raw dairy, dairy itself, but we're just huge advocates for raw dairy. Yeah. You could tell. Um, so that's the most benign carb benign. sources. And then, and tubers. So tubers, raw dairy or Tube dairy, uh, berries, fruit, uh, honey, honey, and tubers. That's our opinion. Our opinion on the benign. And, and then now for the low carb. So what we said to Mike would still apply here. So that would be more of the, um, oh, uh, by the way, like, she, when she says berries, we're talking kind of all fruit at this point. Yeah. Um, and avocado is included in the fruit list. And so if you're looking for the low carb, low carb. it would be the olives, the cucumbers, the some squash, like uh, spaghetti, spaghetti squash, squash, and then avocado. Avocado would be the lower carb options. And you could also experiment with like yogurt or kefir, which has a slightly reduced carb content relative to milk. All right. So that about wraps up today. You guys better have danced with us. Like, otherwise I feel like we just looked really dumb. Yeah. Multiple times within yeah. the last hour. <laughs> it's okay. So All right. we're going to end this with one more dance. No, and we are. Oh God. Thank you to, to the moderators. I see your little toolbars next to your name. We really appreciate that. And thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us today. We'll be on Instagram later today. And if you guys have not heard it, make sure you hit the, the subscribe button so that you st are informed of when we update new videos. Oh, they need the dogs. Oh. Uh, All right. If you want to stay on, I'll get the dogs. All right. Go get. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll remind some people. So it's just me. It's just live with Ashley. Okay. Um, what should I do? She just dropped something. Uh, reminder, we now post on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then we go live at 12.05 on Saturday. So that's kind of more a consistent schedule. Some weeks on Monday, we go live instead of posting a vlog. This next Monday, we are going live to talk more about the carnivore diet. So stay tuned for that, guys, and make sure you tune in. That is going to be at 4.05 p.m. Central Time. And here they come, Gus, Marshy, and where's Angel Baby? She's coming. Angel baby, Nelly mama is coming. Nelly! Nelly! So a reminder, if you join the Strong Sisters community, there are unique benefits such as having access to emojis of our dogs. But then if you, uh, if you go to the next level up, you can also get one-on-one -on -one lives with the other angel community members with just us. So only people who are part of the ultimate angel status community can go live with us. So here is angel baby. Oh angel my gosh. She's picking up. A, <laughs> so angel baby has a cyst on her foot. And so she's wearing the shame. She's got the cone of shame. She's still cute though. She's so confused. Okay. So we're going to end with a little more of a dance we and are. we are going to see you guys. Oh, my phone died. Oh, it just died. So we'll just dance <laughs> here, dance. but we will see you guys on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And until next time, behave, like, behave an like an angel. Okay. Okay. Thank you to the Super Chatters. All right, Marshmallow, you want to give them the last goodbye? Marshmallow. There yep. we go. All right, goodbye. Behave like an angel.